In our last episode, we infiltrated the Adams Air Force Base through the Presidential Metro. After retrieving a Tesla cannon from a Brotherhood of Steel supply drop, we tore our way through the base, destroying vertebrates and tearing Hellfire troopers to pieces. After scaling the air traffic control tower, we lowered the platform to the mobile base crawler just in time for the Brotherhood of Steel to arrive to help us mop up any remaining Enclave outside. With Adams Air Force Base clear, we need to eradicate the Enclave's final base of operations, the mobile base crawler, sitting smack dab in the middle of the runway. The mobile base crawler is a huge, multi-level, rectangular box sitting atop a bunch of treads. Before the war, this was a mobile launcher platform. In our world, this is used by NASA to support the space shuttle at Kennedy Space Center during build-up and launch. It was used to support the Saturn V rocket stack for the Apollo 11 mission and Space Shuttle Atlantis. To find one of these here at Adams Air Force Base gives us the impression that pre-war America didn't launch into space from Florida, but instead from Maryland. I think it's doubtful the Enclave would have found this thing in Florida and dragged it all the way up here. But in the hands of the Enclave, the mobile base crawler now has a very different purpose. Instead of a large rocket with support scaffolding, we find a huge communications tower with satellite dish and a number of vertebrate landing pads. It is this base that they used to control the missiles that they rained down upon Liberty Prime. To put an end to the Enclave's tyranny, we must now climb the ramp and open the door to enter the mobile base crawler. We arrive in a darkened room dimly lit with blue flickering light. We see that the light is coming from a force field blocking our path. Next to the force field is a repulsion field control panel. Activating it, we find four options. We can do nothing, which does nothing. We can smash the control panel. Ouch! The panel seems to have faded a bit. Oh, and people can pass through it. When we try to pass through it, we take a little bit of damage. We can pass an explosives check of 50 to set a timed charge. Backing up a bit. And this destroys the console. But since it was a timed charge, we had enough time to back away before taking damage. But we still take damage when passing through the field. Or we can pass a science check of 80 to turn off the repulsion field. And now we can pass through safely. We see a pathway off to the northeast, or we can turn south towards a repair station. We'll go south for now. We see scrap and junk hidden in the nooks and crannies against the wall. Moving along this wall, we find an ammo crate, then two more next to a destroyed Mr. Handy. And as we round a corner, we find... Oh man, don't hurt me. I just work here. It's a guy named Stiggs. Okay, what are you doing here, Stiggs? I, uh, work on the robots. I fix them up. I saw what you did before you got in the base. You're not gonna hurt me, are you? Yeah, I'm gonna hurt you. Please, I never did anything to you. I'm out of here! Only one of us will away alive. On his body, we find a Robco jumpsuit, which grants plus five to repair. But it's not particularly rare. Or we can say, hurt you? I wasn't planning on it. Oh, thank goodness. I'm Stiggs. Nice to meet you. Likewise. I was wondering if you could answer a few questions. Man, I'm glad you realize I'm not one of the bad guys. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. The only reason you're still alive is because I want information. Right. Well, let's get down to it then. Ask me anything you want. What type of defenses are upstairs? Well, just above us is a Deathclaw research facility. Most of the Deathclaws are out fighting, but there might be one or two left. There are also a bunch of robots in the facility, and they're all controlled through the mainframe. There are also some military types left, but not nearly as many as there used to be. We can pass a robotics expert check to say, all of the robots are run off of a V-31 mainframe? Huh. It's nice to finally meet someone who knows what the heck I'm talking about. It's actually a modified version of the V-29, but response recall protocol is improved, and the data transfer is much more secure. If you got into the mainframe, you could control all of the robots in the facility, 
Ooh, I like the sound of that. So where exactly is this mainframe? Well, you'll want to get to the floor above and then make your way to the middle. That's where the mainframe is. Middle, got it. Well, how do I get to the satellite tower? Well, the satellite tower is right on top of the base. I'm sure you saw it before you came in. You're going to have to make it to the central control area before you can get on top of the launch platform. Once you're on top of the platform, you're probably going to have to make your way past a bunch of soldiers before you get to the tower. You're really helpful. Why should I trust you? I've been trying to get out of here for a while. See, I've done things for the Enclave. Things I can't say I'm proud of. But a man's got to eat. When the Enclave picked me up, I was starving and suffering from radiation poisoning. I felt I owed him. Now, now it's time to leave. You'll make a great distraction while I make off with a few robots and supplies. I help you, and you help me. Okay, I see how it is. Well, good luck out there, Stiggs. It was nice meeting you, but I have to get while the getting's good. Maybe I'll see you around. Come on, Sparky. Hoover, let's go. And with that, Stiggs walks off with his pet robots, Sparky and Hoover. We don't ever see them again, but hopefully they'll live long and happy lives. So this was Stig's workshop. We find a couple of containers down here, a first aid box, an enclave crate with missiles inside. We find another one of those repulsion fields. We can turn it off to find a little supply nook. There are shotgun shells and a locker, some buff out, radex and a stim pack on a shelf. Below this, two first aid kits and a wooden crate filled with whiskey. On the other side of an empty locker, we find two more first aid kits. I wonder if the game's trying to tell us something about what's to come. There's some jet on a shelf above, and in bins on the bottom, we find some Rataway and some blood packs. Then on a table nearby, we find some Mentats, and on a shelf to the right of this, we find Psycho, Dirty Water, some Buff Out, and more Mentats in a little box at the bottom. With this workshop explored, we can continue south. We see a sign to launch pad. Warning, live death claws. There's a ladder here that goes up. But instead of taking this ladder, let's finish exploring this floor by turning north. To the northeast, we find another repulsion field. Using the nearby console, we can turn it off. And here we find a bunch of junk. Scrap all over the shelves and boxes. Not much of interest until we turn around. There we find a teddy bear peeking out of a wooden box. And we can loot three lunch boxes from this shelf. Continuing north, we pass under a sign that says high security clearance. And as we do... Uh-oh, that can't be good. Pulling out the big guns. It's Enclave Squad Sigma. Enclave Squad Sigma is the most elite fighting squad in the Enclave. But between Fox and yours truly, we made quick work of them. We can walk away with a ton of Enclave armor and big weapons, but by now we're drowning in it, so we'll just loot their fingers and move on. To the northeast, we find another repulsion field. This one is labeled Armory. After turning it off, whoa, we find all sorts of goodies. Enclave armor in a crate, Four ammo canisters on the ground, a sniper rifle and a combat shotgun on a counter above it, a Gatling laser on the counter next to this, missiles in a box below it, missiles in a box next to it, electron charge packs and a stealth boy on the counter above it, and then a whole bunch of explosives on a table nearby. Plasma explosives, pulse grenades, psycho, buff out, a laser rifle and a super sledge. We can then rifle through some shelves to the southwest, just a bunch of junk, but we do find a first aid kit and some Mentats on a top shelf. And that's the first level of the mobile base crawler. All right, not too bad. I'm not turned around just yet. On this northern side, we find a staircase leading up to a launch pad and the dormitory. Well, looks like we have two choices, a door on either end of the base crawler. To continue, we'll go through this northern door. On the other side, we arrive on a small room with a door to the west and one to the east. And we see an Enclave officer. On the body of the Enclave officer, we find the high clearance key card. This will prove useful in just a bit. 
According to the sign on the wall, we are near the dormitory. And we see some arrows pointing to the launch pad. Turning the corner, ah! We find ourselves in a room at the bottom of a staircase. There's a storage room to the north, but there's nothing inside. Taking a look at our map, looks like these rooms are stacked right next to each other, and they take up multiple floors. There's a doorway leading outside just above us. We'll start by heading up the staircase to see what's here. At the top, sure enough, we find the door to the launch pad. Oh, but it's locked with a very hard lock. Maybe we can find a way to unlock it. But this upper room appears to be clear. It connects through a doorway to the south, but let's head back downstairs first so we don't get disoriented. Oh wait, but then Fox gets attacked! Now I release you! Alright, forget downstairs for now. Heading out the door, it looks like we're still firmly in the dormitory. Turning east for now, we see a door to the left and sure enough it leads to a dormitory. Lots of beds, but nothing really else of interest here. We find a staircase leading downstairs to another dormitory. Wow. So this is where they've kept all the Enclave. On this lower level of the Eastern Dormitory, we find a couple of containers to the east. One is filled with missiles. Another is filled with flamer fuel. And we find a first aid kit on a shelf. Turning south, we can open a door, which leads to a hallway. Across the hallway is a door to storage. Not much here. Oh... We find some skeletons in the corner. This guy had a scope to Magnum. And the remains of squatters killed by Enclave when they invaded? Or remnants from before the war? Back out to the hallway, we turn west to arrive back at the door where we entered. So we'll continue west into the next hallway. To the left, we find what must be an officer's bedroom. There's some mentats on top of a footlocker and a whole bunch of cigarettes in a carton. After looting some buff out between a filing cabinet and a bin on the ground, we can head back to the hallway and continue west. To the left, we find a bathroom with a whole bunch of stalls. In the first one, we find a gnome. Oh, and it's another evil one. He's surrounded by gore. Now, there's supposed to be a death claw hand attached to this gnome, but it was invisible in my game. However, I could still activate it, and upon activating it, I could pick it up. Well, I'd hate to see the look on that Enclave officer when this popped out of the toilet to disembowel him. Inspecting all of the other stalls, however, we don't find much until on one, we find an eye chart on the wall, an Enclave officer's hat on the tank, a TV against the other wall with a cigar, some pork and beans and beer on the toilet, and a fan with a pack of cigarettes on the ground. Talk about a relaxation point. You can take care of everything here. Matter goes in, matter comes out. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Sounds like Fox getting into trouble out there. Heading back to the hallway, we can help him out. It was a pre-war robot. Stiggs told us we could deactivate these things if we found the mainframe. Let's make that our top priority. But to finish exploring, we can turn around, go west, and then turn right. This leads to another dormitory, with more loot on a shelf against the northern wall. Here we find a vault lunch lunchbox and a couple bottles of buff out in a wooden box on the ground. We find a staircase to the west, and if this is anything like the last one, yep, leading to another dormitory right above it. So, heading south out this door, we can kill a scientist. Target just fall back. Oh, tricky guy, didn't want to die, but he had a finger, I don't feel bad. To arrive outside the medical bay, taking a look at our map just to make sure we know where we are. All right, so this northern side just had these three big rooms the large staircase in the middle, and the two multi-level dormitories on either side. So from here, we need to explore south. Moving into the medical bay, we can loot some psycho on a console. On the other side of an operating table, we find two lockers, some energy cells in one, and not much in the other. On our way out, we find a first aid kit on the ground, and inside a bin, some buff out and rad X with a bone saw. Target lock. was a stealthy one. On his body, we also find a high clearance key card. Taking a look at our map again, looks like there are two doors towards the center of this floor. Let's see if we can find them. Moving south, we find a high security clearance room. There's a terminal here, but we hear noise on the other side of a door and it's locked, but we can use the keys we got off the Enclave officers to open them. Ah! 
Ow. Oh, come here. Where are you going? There we go. Okay, sentry bot on the other side of this door, and another officer. Before going any further, let's explore this terminal. After looting a foot locker on the ground beneath the table, we can hack the terminal. Oh, but all we see is an option to disengage the lock. So we could have opened it without the key, cool. Well, before heading any further south, let's move east. Stig said that the mainframe control was in the middle of this floor. Looks like we may be close. From this top level, we arrive on a platform connected to a bunch of floating pods. And there it is, mainframe. But before going to the mainframe, let's go downstairs. Because why not? Maybe I just like destroying robots. At the bottom, we find a door to the east, locked with an easy lock. Inside, ooh, we find a bit of an armory. There's a first aid box on the ground, a flamer on a countertop, three ammo boxes on the ground next to this. Turning around, we find a minigun on a counter. Next to this, three more ammo boxes, but inside these, we find alien power cells. And in the gun case on the counter above them, we find another alien blaster. This alien blaster is just like the one we got from the crashed alien wreckage, the same place where we started the Mothership Zeta DLC. I covered this weapon in detail in my series on Mothership Zeta. But alien power cells are a finite resource in the Fallout universe. We can't buy them from merchants, so it's great to find these here. There's a combat shotgun on a shelf and another Gatling laser on another countertop. When done looting the armory, we can turn around and pick a hard-locked door. Oh, we are on the other side of a barricade. Oh, looks like this guy can't get in, and he looks mad. Ooh, he's angry. He oh! I dang it, die! Oh, well, I don't think that was supposed to happen. He kind of glitched through the barrier. This was the Armory Master, and he was carrying two unique items. The first is the Composite Recon Helmet. This is the only one in the game. It looks and acts just like every other Recon Helmet, with 4 DR and granting plus one to perception. It differs from a normal Recon Helmet only in that it has higher durability, 70, compared to a regular Recon Helmet's 40. So it'll last longer before breaking. The Precision Gatling Laser is identical to a regular Gatling Laser, with one exception. It has a much higher critical chance multiplier, 0.2, compared to 0.05 of the regular Gatling Laser, which means each shot gives us a higher chance to land a critical strike. Sorry, Fox, kind of made you take care of that by yourself, didn't I? Well, I was busy. Looks like they destroyed this console, so we can't turn the field off. We need to find another way out. Turning back around, we arrive again at the bottom of those floating pods. And you know what? I think it's about time we got control of these robots. Finding the staircase and heading back up to the floating pods, we can move towards the mainframe. Passing under the sensitive electronic sign, we arrive in a small room with two computers. Facing south, we find the hard-locked robot control mainframe. After hacking it, long live the Enclave. We find a number of options. We can run a robotics diagnostic, Robots are online and on defensive mode. Now, from here we could perform safety shutdown, which simply turns them all off, scramble the robot targeting parameters, which makes them equally hostile to the Enclave and us, or we can pass a robotics expert check to program the robots to only target the Enclave. I think I know what I'm choosing. All right, things are about to get much easier. Turning around, we find the security terminal. From here, we can unlock all interior doors, unlock all doors to the exterior, and unlock the armory. Well, we've already accessed the armory, but the other two options will be useful. That very hard locked door we found earlier to the north is now unlocked. Now we know our way out. But before leaving, let's finish exploring. So here we are in the very middle of this level. We need to finish exploring to the east and then move south. Moving east first, we can look through some windows. Looks like a mess hall over there, but no doors on this side. Let's see if we can find a way over there. But the pod forces us west. To the right, we find a door to the launch pad. Again? Oh, it's a ladder. Okay, so another way to the launch pad above. A ladder in the middle and that very hard locked door we passed to the north. 
We'll pick one of these in a bit after we finish exploring this level. Looks like there's no way to get to the mess hall from this level, so heading back downstairs, we can turn south towards a door marked, warning, live death claws. Oh, great. Opening the door, we arrive in a hallway. There's a path to the west and a path to the east. Moving east and turning right. Oh, it's a death claw. And he's friendly. Oh, that's right. He's got one of the scramblers attached to his head. And with the device Valancourt gave us, he'll fight for us as an ally. A welcome addition to the team. Let's release this guy by activating the nearby console and turning off the repulsion field. Hey, buddy. Welcome to the party. What? What are you doing? Fox! What? What? I must have been hearing things. <laughs> this is why we can't have anything nice, Fox. Because you kill anything that moves. I'm going to take away all your weapons after we're done here. That gun at Fox. On the shelf nearby, we find a bucket inside some microfusion cells and more on the shelf. Taking a look at our map, we're beginning to move south, but there's that room to the northeast. Let's see if we can find a way there. Heading back to the hallway. Oh, this just leads to that armory. I'll put it. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it wasn't attacking us. Oh, that's right. It also is considered robot security. Okay, cool so we don't have to worry about turrets. We see that same force field that we saw within the armory, but we can't deactivate it because Fox and the security bot destroyed it. Then going through a door to the northeast, we can head down a hallway to round a corner back to the dorm. All right, so the north and the west completely explored. Oh. Well, what were you thinking, Enclave Scientist? Come on, I got a precision Gatling laser here. All right, back into the Deathclaw pen. We can move around. Oh, what's that? A force field on top of this storage chamber. I wonder what's up there. But first, heading into the storage chamber, we find an ammunition box on the ground and a crate with some microfusion cells and a plasma mine on top of the table. Heading back out, we find another Deathclaw pen. We can deactivate the repulsion field, but this is the same pen that had the Deathclaw fox killed. It's just another door but still no staircase leading up to the repulsion field at the top there. Let's keep exploring to find a way up. Moving southwest, we find another storage room, but this is empty. Taking a look at our map, we're almost at the southern end of this level. A few more rooms to explore. Moving south, we find the hatch leading to the ladder that we saw in the level below, the one that was near Stig's workshop. So had we taken it, we would have popped out right here, near to the Death Claws. Turning west, we find a bit of a workshop. There's a workbench to the right, and a number of shelves, boxes, and containers to the south. In the Enclave Foot Locker, we find some caps, there's a first aid box on a shelf, and some flamer fuel in a bin under a book. Oh, you die! Yeah! Sorry, Fox. These scientists, man, they're really loyal. Continuing west, we can leave the workshop by going through a door that turns north. Here we find a ton of scrap on some shelves against the wall. Lots of stuff here. There's some scotch in a box at the bottom, some cram in another box, a vault lunch lunchbox on a nearby shelf, beer in another box, and pre-war money in the last one. Here we find a staircase leading up. This leads up to the mainframe. It's that same staircase we chased that scientist down. Let's make sure we finished everything on this lower platform, heading back towards the death claws. We can move east towards the staircase we first descended, and it's here we find a bunch of aqua pura. Oh, the enclave. More clear evidence that they have been waylaying Brotherhood caravans to steal aqua pura. Taking the staircase up, we can navigate the catwalks up here to try to find a way to that area above the storage room that's sealed off with force fields. On top of one storage area, we find a console. In a bin nearby hiding under some books is some rat away. Moving south, we see the force field over there. There's a hallway to the north and another platform right behind us to the south. Moving south first, we see a Deathclaw in stasis. Don't know if he's gonna be fit to help us. Nearby, we find the Deathclaw Research Terminal but it's locked with an average lock. After hacking it, all we find are two options, enable or disable the Deathclaw field. See, which field is this? If we disable it, well, it appears nothing has happened. If we enable it, peering over the side, oh, okay, so it was just that field we disabled from the ground earlier. We'll turn that back off. 
That appears to be it for this side. So turning north, we can move down the hallway where we can go west or east. Looks like east brings us closer to that force field. Turning north, ah, oh, there's the mess hall. And turning around leads to sensitive electronics. We see the force field, but we know how to take care of that. Using the nearby console to turn it off, we can step inside. And here on a table, we find the slow burn flamer. This is a unique item, yet another unique flamer in broken steel. Remember, we found the rapid torch flamer in the atom storage facility in our last video. This weapon is the polar opposite to the Rapid Torch Flamer, whereas the Rapid Torch Flamer ignites as soon as we pull the trigger with no ramp up time, giving us precise control over our ammunition. The Slow Burn Flamer also has no warm up time, but consumes three flamer fuel with each burst, causing it to literally burn through ammunition. The upside is that it's much stronger than the Rapid Torch Flamer, dealing 18 damage per attack compared to 16, and the resulting burn deals 8 damage a second over 5 seconds compared to the Rapid Torch Flamer's 2 damage per second over 5 seconds. This results in a DPS of 152 compared to the Rapid Torch Flamer's 130. In terms of damage, the only flamer to best it is the Burn Master, found at the Franklin Metro Utility in the base game. But since it consumes so much fuel, its effective magazine size is only 20, compared to the Rapid Torch Flamer's 60. Nearby, we find another Death Claw Control Terminal, and hacking it, we find the same options as the last one, but with a note. In the event of instability and Death Claw neural manipulation, please make use of the nearby flame-inducing device. Okay, so that's why it's here. Very prudent in your caution, Enclave. To finish exploring, we can turn north. Before going to the mess hall, we can turn right and finish exploring this pod. At the very end, we find two crates and hiding behind them is an awful scene. We find a skeleton hugging a teddy bear wearing a red baseball cap. He's surrounded by dandy boy apples and empty bottles of Nuka-Cola. The hat and bear and roller skates give us the impression that this was a young boy. Perhaps he came here to hide after the bombs dropped, and when he ran out of food, not wanting to eat the apples for some reason, he hugged his teddy bear and starved to death. Well, we can just take that. He won't be needing it anymore, and we can give it to little Marie. Turning around, we can move north. Oh! Fall back! No more! Time to die! Take care of some business and move into the mess hall. In typical Enclave fashion, each place setting is perfect, just like we found at Raven Rock. To the northwest, we arrive at the kitchen. The kitchen is in much greater disarray, dishes and silverware and trays everywhere. There's a first aid box on some lockers, not much in the lockers. Lots of boxed foods on a nearby table. We can snag the sugar bombs for Murphy. After examining a refrigerator filled with some food, we can open a door to the east. This leads us to a hallway, connecting to the mess hall to the right and sending us towards the dormitory to the north. All right, with that, we have fully explored this level of the mobile base crawler. Now we have two options. We can climb up the ladder in the middle of this floor, or we can open the door to the north to the launch pad. We arrive to hear sounds of battle, heading up the nearby stairs. Oh, it was the robotic security. Oh, a vertebrate. They can't take care of that, but I think I can. Oh, oh, I'll never get tired of that. Well, it looks like hacking the robots from the mainframe gave us control over all of the robots, even the ones outside of the mobile base crawler. With the Enclave taken care of, we can take a look at our map. We're on the northern side of the base crawler. We see two doorways south of us. Peering over, there's air traffic control where we lowered the platform, and there are the hangars we explored in my last episode. And there, right on top of the mobile base crawler, is the satellite dish that we're trying to get to. Before we head that way though, we see a staircase going over some pipes in the middle of this level. Moving over them, we find a floating pod. There are three Enclave crates just outside this floating pod, with missiles, flamer fuel, plasma mines, and electron charge packs. Heading into the floating pod, we find even more ammo boxes. On the ground and behind us, we can walk away with missiles and Enclave power armor. Then in the southeastern corner of this pod, oh, what's this? Oh, it's a hatch. This leads us down the ladder we saw in the middle of the floor below. So now we know where this went. 
Well, that leaves only one path forward. That's to head back up, go towards the vertebrate landing pad, and turn south. But just as we're about to head south, we hear more vertebrates off in the distance. All right, has my aim improved since our last episode? Oh yes, one more, can I get it? <laughs> oh yeah. What, that's it, no more? Oh. Moving south, we can loot more containers on the ground with plasma grenades and power fists. And then rounding a bunch of crates, we find the Enclave, hunkering down near a pod by the satellite dish. the sentry bots and the Tesla cannon, they don't stand a chance. Before going into the pod, we can scale the stairs to examine this landing pad. Nothing much up here though. We can peer over the side. We see a great view of the rest of the airport, the storage facility off to the southeast. Heading back down, we can move into the pod. After looting the enemies on the ground, we find a couple more containers, one with bottle caps inside. And to the south, we find a door to the satellite control tower. But I wanted to see if there was another way up there. Heading outside, we do see another vertebrate landing pad by the satellite dish. Climbing some stairs nearby, we don't find a way to access it. So it looks like our only path left is to head back into the pod and open the door to the satellite control tower. We arrive at a small corridor. We hear the Enclave in the next room, and we find a staircase going up. Let's clear the tower of Enclave, and then come back later to loot. Right, this thing's too slow. That's better. With the Enclave dead, we can go back down and explore. Turning around, we can unlock an average locked door. This leads to a small storage hallway. We find flamer fuel on the ground. Guess Bethesda knew we'd probably need it. And more on a shelf. There are two ammo canisters on the shelf and a big tub of aqua pura nearby. Turning around, we can move west. We see a staircase leading up. But before we go up there, let's finish exploring down here. Moving east down the hallway, we find two first aid boxes on a shelf, some psycho right above it, an ammo box below, and some right away on a box next to it. This pathway then goes around a corner, bringing us to a platform next to a staircase leading down. On this platform, we find more shelves. We can loot a first aid box, an ammo canister, and some pulse mines on the bottom. Then on the next shelf, we find four more ammo canisters with some radix and buff out nearby. After exploring all of the side passages and staircases, we can head to the middle and take the staircase back down to see what we passed up. On this ground floor, we find a bunch of stuff. A first aid kit, a lunch box, and two bottles of buff out in a box. A first aid kit on a shelf above, Moving into a pod on the ground here, we find an ammo canister with flamer fuel inside, a bunch of combat knives, some cigarettes, frag mines in a bin, some missiles, microfusion cells, and a baseball grenade in a box next to it. Then we can loot a first aid kit on the top of the shelf. After passing more aqua pura, man, they had this everywhere, we arrive back at the door we used to first enter. Okay, with everything explored, we can take the staircase all the way to the top floor. Here we find a number of terminals on some tables and doors in the walls surrounding. Examining the first terminal, we can unlock all station doors. That should make things easier. Examining the next one, we see that it's the communications terminal. Logging onto comms relay, comms active. In the first one, transfer request. Hey downstairs, this new guy you sent to help out is awful. I mean, he can barely tie his shoes. This is advanced technical equipment up here, and I can't have him work on it. He'll probably end up accidentally calling an orbital strike down on the base or something. Here's an idea. How about you send the guy that cleans the toilets up here, and I can give him the job instead. Is it really that hard to find decent help? Hey, 
Does that mean we can call in an orbital strike on the base? We'll put a pin in that for later. And the next one, satellite tracking equipment. Hey downstairs, it's me again. Are we ever gonna get a tech up here to work on this satellite tracking equipment? I swear it's offline every couple of days, and then it's literally hours of work before I have the system online and linked up to the satellite again. This is ridiculous. Oh, looks like the Enclave are human after all. In the next one, Mentats abuse. Guys, strike two. This is the second Dimwitch you've sent up here, and I'm getting tired of it. I thought he was okay at first, but by lunchtime his Mentats had worn off and he could barely hold a conversation, let alone work on a satellite control terminal. I can't have a junkie up here spacing out as soon as his pills wear off. Fix this. And in the final one, we only see this if we took control of mobile base crawler security. Robots gone haywire. Robots are freaking out! About 15 minutes ago, all of the robots in the place just went haywire and started attacking everyone. The guards and the new guy managed to lock them in the storage area, but we need someone up here to sort them out immediately. What's going on down there anyway? I was going on down there. Glad to see we caused a little bit of chaos in there. In the middle of this room, we find a terminal banked with blue glowing light. This is the satellite uplink terminal. This is what we came for. And the choices we make after activating this terminal have dramatic consequences on the ending we get for the Broken Steel DLC. But I'm all out of time. In my next episode, we'll activate the terminal and find out what happens for every choice we're able to make. I publish new Fallout videos every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop, Lion's Pride. The Brotherhood does its best, but sometimes they need something a little special. That's where Lion's Pride comes in. This new design comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other products as well, like smartphone cases, stickers, posters, mugs, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with the dramatic conclusion to Broken Steel.